Hi everyone, this is Tommy Lackey with Power Investing and welcome to the weekly macro review where we go through select charts and relative strength views of the market to get a top-down idea of where we are. So let's go ahead and get started with our triple play charts. And as you can see here, the markets of most of the week were just pretty much in a free fall. Um, pretty hard dive with RSI getting down near the 20 level and uh, CFG is all below zero at this point. Now they definitely can go lower from here. Um, however, that rejection that we talked about back at 60 a week or two ago, beginning of the year, really has turned out to be a tough one. Um, from here, we just have to wait and see price reverse. We are pretty well oversold, so it could happen any time, um, but you gotta make sure that uh, the buyers show up more for more than 30 minutes like they did a few times last week. All right, so when we move on down here and we look at just the overall breadth picture, um, we'll glance at this again, but pretty much again, same thing. This week it was just down all the way across the board, making some new lows as far as the NHNL. Um, we still have one moving average or one signal that hasn't crossed to a sell, but we have two or three of our um, new high, new low signals at sell. Our uh, advanced decline lines down here very much at the bottom of the range we're working with here. Um, and then we see our moving averages all getting down towards the lower line or below with the shortest term. Now one thing we do want to note here is that we can't call divergences obviously until we actually see the markets turn and make that last trough. But if you look at the short term here from the moving average right here and also on the 50, we have the potential for some divergence if we do get a turn up here. And with the uh, breadth thrust all the way down here near 32, uh, once you get down to the 30 level or below, especially market wide, that's a pretty big stretch um, that expects some kind of bounce uh, sooner than later, of course. Uh, whether it lasts or not or diverges again, that's that's a whole other question. Now, when we look at the uh, world markets and the ETFs, one thing we noted here in our uh, review was that we seem to have a lot of Latin America, Africa, things that are, you know, smaller. It's some Middle East stuff in there that are more on leadership right now. Things that are smaller, not as much on the developed world side. Um even Europe is right towards the middle of the pack. And as we look down here and pull down to the bottom of this list, we can see that the SPY, the IWM, and the QQQ are all right down there at the bottom with Russia. Um, so that's not exactly where we want to be from an equity standpoint, but there are some other opportunities there, which uh, Tyler points out in a, uh, a quick macro review that we'll be posting a little bit later potentially. Um, so we have that. Now we move on to the intermarket. In our intermarket, uh, we're still very commodity based, leading here on the commodity side. Um, the dollar's right there in the middle. Our equity stuff is all at the bottom. Again, this is not favoring equities, but it is favoring commodities continued. So there is a place, there are areas with, that are still performing pretty well. Now we saw everything give up Friday. Uh, had a pretty much one of the correlation one days, which you happen when you get the waterfall type sell-offs. Um, but we'll see if that lasts or if the relative strength in commodities can kind of pick itself back up if the market finds some legs. Um, from a size and style, it's still large to small, value to growth. So value is just first period, gross at the bottom, large and small. Now the growth really got killed this week. Um, everything was down. Negative four was our was our best performer with mega value, um, but small cap growth was down 8.09%. Again, we're getting some of these rubber band stretches that, you know, we're getting to that point in the move that I've talked about over the years that even if we do go a little bit lower, the reflexivity, once it does bounce, will be, will be great enough usually to offset where we're at now, kind of erase what's going on in overall markets, not necessarily individual holdings. So it's not necessarily the best place to be making big changes, um, but you do realize that obviously we can still go lower from here, but once we do get a reflexive snapback, it could very well erase this last waterfall type scenario pretty quickly. So be open to that. Market sectors, again, your commodities with energy up here up top, consumer staples, utilities. So energy's on top. 
The rest are, again, you're just your defensive plays, financials next, and then materials. That stays pretty much the same till we get down to the bottom here, and we see that materials are number one on the small caps, and then financials, and then energy. Okay, so materials and financials from a small cap standpoint have been outperforming, but let's take that in context and still a negative 5% this week and negative 6.81% this week. So that's pretty big down. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily call it super outperformance. Um, now when we get to the universe itself, we look at it on the RSI chart. Again, you're in a position to where if we get a turn, if we have the potential for divergences being set up here, um, but we're also at such a low level in the RSI that a secondary divergence or a very short-term one after that would not be that surprising. Now, when we back this off again, we can see that whereas the IWM completely broke its overall range, this one having the large caps added in here as well is showing that we're really more towards the bottom of the overall range for this one going back to here. Had a little bit more of a spike on it. Um, but so we're in an area to where we want to hold here somewhere pretty real soon um, from an overall total market standpoint. Um, large caps have outperformed, as we've said. So if they can help kind of hold the line here and then get some reversal, then maybe we can get some life back in more than just that area. We already went through this particular breadth measure, so I'm gonna pull on down here to the percent making new highs and lows. Again, this was something, the same thing I had mentioned about the divergences. You can't call a divergence until you get the second price trough. But as we can see here, it's interesting because on the short term, it's slightly divergent so far, but tomorrow could certainly be different if we're down again but slightly divergent here at these much lower lows, divergent in the middle, but not divergent on the longer term. So this shows it did take its toll here on some of the longer term, the 63 day lows. But if these two shorter term diverge and we get a bounce, again, that's what divergence are for, is to try to see that difference in the low. You get a price low oftentimes, you get a divergence low, or I mean indicator low, and then the price low. All right, so we go to the equal weight sectors here before we wrap this up, and we can see on our own, not, I mean, similar to the uh, ETFs, energy, consumer staples, utilities, materials, financials, financials, excuse me. So again, these are our leaders. The only big mover this week was utilities who kind of came back in. And again, that's just because it lost less, not because it gained more. So take that in context. It could just kind of be the last one to fall but it is typically a less volatile player, so it would make sense if it did uh, have a little less downside volatility as well. Um, so that's kind of where we're gonna wrap it up. I'm not we're gonna go into the subsectors in this one. We'll take care of that in the next sector video. I hope this helps everybody get started. Uh, take a look at some of the chart highlights below as well as um, the macro review post out by Tyler in the morning, all right? Hope everybody has a great week and I hope this helps you get started.